It is dawn, and a new day begins. Across the land, a wake-up call is heard, and in the towns and cities of America, entrepreneurs rise to the call. Time for new developments, new visions, new growth. It is time to move America forward. Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. I'm William Shatner, and you're watching Moving America Forward. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studio in Los Angeles, and we're here today with one of the most interesting and important companies in America today that is truly helping to move America forward. It's a fascinating story. Our guest is the founder, the president, and the CEO of a company called Terrapin Blue, which is headquartered in Athens, Georgia. I'd like you to meet him now. He is Ryan Kelly, who is here on my left. Ryan, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. To begin, a short while ago, you had the unique opportunity of having a brief conversation with William Shatner, who was in our other studio. Uh, it was taped, so let's take a brief look at that and see just how it went, okay? Yes. I understand you've been helping companies to advance their business through consulting services. Tell me how you do this, and, and do you feel it's moving America forward? Mr. Shatner, I'm proud to say we're moving America forward by creating better ways to move Americans forward, and we're doing it on today's private and public transportation vehicles. We provide the private motor coach companies, public transit agencies, federal, state, and local government, and companies of all sizes that represent the transportation industry with highly specialized consulting services. These services include critical training to mitigate terrorism and criminal events on buses, terminals, and facilities. Well, that was very interesting. You, you said that you provide training and consulting services for both private companies and trans the transportation industry. Let's take a look at those industries and see what kind of services you actually provide. Give me some examples. Yeah, Terrapin Blue actually has three brands. One of them is called Plan of Action, and that's where we do our emergency preparedness planning and training. We work with bus companies all over the United States, and we train the drivers, management, and uh, how to mitigate terrorism and to actually respond to any if, if anything ever happens in one of the vehicles or at one of the facilities. Also, we have another brand that's called GRIP, Green Room International Productions, where we find ourselves now, especially in this dark economy, really helping our clients uh, win business through media. A lot of our clients never understood how important media and getting their name out in the industry really helps them be more profitable in such a dark time. Right. And then our other company, Community Spec, the third brand, we're, we're building, which is my favorite, is public-private partnerships, where my private sector clients are partnering with public entities, government, transit, and really providing a more cost-effective solution and really helping government as we all look for dollars right now as, as the economy uh, has not quite gotten to back where we all wanted it to be. So it's you know, it's, it sounds really fascinating. I, I'm, I'm, I'm taken aback a little bit about your talk about training bus drivers and people like that for terrorism situations. Is that a, is that a big concern? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we have these major events like 9-11 and we all get around and, and do things. Then we go back to sleep, but uh, the war's not over. So, you know, especially with the motor coach industry, you have one person driving a bus, 55 passengers a thousand miles away from home, and they're vulnerable. And so, you know, unfortunately, transportation and buses are really uh, very vulnerable in the industry because they're sexy for the media. And so it's very, very important to, uh, to in make sure that these companies are prepared and to actually mitigate because we actually prepare these guys to look for suspicious behavior, actually inspecting the boss, the, the, 
actually inspecting the buses for bombs. That's one of the most important things we do in our training is these pre, what they're called pre, uh, pre-trip inspections where they sweep the bus before they actually take the bus out and pick up passengers. And so you, do you train the drivers uh, on, on what happens if, if somebody tries to do something or they try to interfere with the bus or the driving of the bus while it's, while it's you know, en route to wherever it's headed? Absolutely. We actually work with management uh, in case actually a, a bus is hijacked, how to, to uh, what's called arrest, communicate with a hijacker on board, how to respond, keeps the passenger safe and secure. Yeah, well, you're and, talking about the executives now. I'm talking about that little old bus driver who's the one who's the target of all the action here. Do you work, do you train them? Absolutely. He's, a, he's the most important person we focus on. Sure. And it's amazing the response we get from the drivers and the stories we get out there on the road. Uh, they're, they're, the, they're the backbone of, of mitigating terrorism in our country. And this is not the kind of training that they normally get, is it? Not at all. It's not I mean, nobody's really focused on this very much. Not at all. And it's, it's very, very important. Uh, we go to sleep. You know, we have these big events. We put money around it, media around it, and then something else happens, and we forget that we're vulnerable. We're still working around the world and in Afghanistan and Iraq, and unfortunately, America is still vulnerable to terrorist attacks. And buses are, uh, you know, in the case of such Israel is a prime example. Buses make the media, and unfortunately, when you hijack a bus, you have passengers on the bus. Uh, it's uh, terrorism is just one of those unfortunate things that we have to to still be on alert for because it's not over yet and it won't be over for quite some time. And so how do you do this kind of training and consultation with them? Well, what we, happens? Well, you know, we, we go out and we do a pre-tactical planning session uh, where we actually work with them before we actually come out. We actually do critical mapping. We map all their facilities and the buses and, and so that if anything ever happens that first responders use mobile media to be able to dial into websites and have all critical infrastructure of the vehicles. Also, we put together crisis management plans so that if, if a bus is hijacked, the driver knows what to do, the management knows what to do, and and if the hijacker is actually on board the vehicle, yeah. he knows how to, through duress, to contact management without the hijacker ever even knowing he's on board. That's very interesting indeed. You're really focused on the transportation industry, aren't you? I know that one of the, the things you really focus heavily on is try to get these bus companies, for example, back to work in, a, in, in, in this down economy and, and teach them how to, how to increase their income. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the motor coach industry was really focused on charter and tour. And when the economy, like it is right now, goes south, school districts can ride school buses. So what we're trying to do is to diversify their transportation portfolio. And that's really through uh, getting in DOD contracts, Department of Defense contracts, uh, building uh, public-private partnerships with government entities to run these services, which actually uh, we're reinvesting in the economy. When the private sector has these contracts, guess what? They're taxpayers. So it's the new 21st century business model. Private sector, partnering with government, working together to solve problems, save money, and provide a better service to the residents of our country. So how do you do this, for example, with a, with a local bus company? Well, I've, I'm working on projects right now in, in the South, especially in Mississippi, Alabama, and South Carolina. A lot of these guys are charter. You call, I need a, I'm having a wedding, I'm, uh, you know, I've got a school bus trip, or we're going somewhere to New York, I've got to take the band. You know, those days are over with because the market's so competitive. So we sit down, we work with, you know, there's a lot of RFPs out there. There's a lot of... What's that? Uh, RFP is a, a request for proposal. Sorry. That's okay. You <laughs> okay. know, it's uh, basically like uh, right recently we had uh, the Nashville, the greater Nashville metropolitan area, one of our clients in Nashville is now running commuter service there. Um, and actually we're working in regional transportation because with the airports as clogged up as they are, a lot of people are going to start riding buses now because you can ride, you can have access to Wi-Fi, it's a lot quicker, you don't have to go through security, and uh, it saves us a lot of money in infrastructure development. There's a lot of talk about rail out there. Rail is very expensive. Once you lay rail, it's there. All these bus companies can move as demographics and economies change, yeah. and really the passengers get the same benefits of it. So we uh, go out there, we have, we, you know, we have meetings, we find out what they're capable of doing, and we go and work with uh, the opportunities are there. A lot of them is uh, inner city bus service, uh, really? running uh, transit agencies for government, actually going and managing those transit systems, as well as uh, working with the airport shuttle service. Uh, all kinds of various transportation opportunities are out there that never even knew existed. What are your first steps with a new client who, who comes to talk to you or you approach them? What, what, what happens? Well, we, we have a team of professionals and where we go in and we play detective. I mean, who are these people? What is their current business model? How do they operate? What are the current markets that they serve? How can we go in there and help them expand their business and actually, uh, we call it uh, open up their tool chest and, and um, basically help them get into other transportation verticals that they're not currently serving. And a lot of these guys are getting into school bus market. Uh, 
they're, they're actually working with Greyhound, which, which is called interlining uh, and, and providing additional inner city bus service that's not currently being provided and uh, getting into all kinds of markets that they never thought that were there, they're right there in their backyard. And actually becoming better community stakeholders yeah. and, and actually getting out there and working in their communities and making a difference. It, it, I've got the best job in the world. I mean, I get to help these small companies. A family companies have been around for 100 years, from streetcars to clean diesel. It's the story. You know, especially with, with where the economy is right now, you've got these family businesses, this third and fourth generation businesses that are still out there, survive the recessions, survive the depressions, and are out there, but they never knew that all these other opportunities were out there. So so it's just, I've got the best job in the world. You're passionate about this. Absolutely. I mean, it's very obvious. Um, <clears throat> you're, and, you're, and you're making a difference. I, it, I, I'm, I'm humbled. It's, you know, I started out uh, with a, uh, being the executive director of a rural public transit system over 10 years ago. We have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, me and one guy. We're out getting people to work, getting people to health care, getting people to education, helping them better in their lives because they didn't have access to transportation. Yeah. So I really did a lot of work in public transportation in the beginning, and now I've moved over to the private sector. And now uh, I was actually at a meeting before I came to do the shoot here where we're actually making these regional statewide solutions where you can be intermodal throughout the state, where residents can really get out there and access the resources they need to be successful in America. It sounds like a success story. It's a, what, what's your best success story? Well, right now, it's a, we did the, the governor of the state of Georgia recently passed uh, uh, legislation that we've been working with over a decade to consolidate systems, to make it more efficient, and make it, make it more accessible for uh, the residents of Georgia to, to access public transportation. And it's working. Absolutely. You know, it's a, just such a great story. There, but there's a whole other division of your company. I want to ask you, you have a production studio. Uh, what do you do with that? And do you use that in this? Absolutely. I use our production studio. When we respond to, we were talking about early RFPs and state bids, we do yeah. media. Everything's media. We live in a 21st century uh, business model where everything's now Facebook, Twitter, right, right, media, right. media, media. So uh, a lot of our clients were, weren't even running commercials in their own uh, markets. So we're helping them actually have websites that makes them more competitive and, and, and actually win business because we see it all the time. Everybody wants it now in the next generation of clients or the kids that all they do is this. Yeah. So these folks have to understand you have to understand the value of media. So I have a full production studio that we do commercials, music, put it together so it all really correlates together in a bundle of services to help these guys be more successful in the marketplace. Well, you should talk about a bundle. You're a bundle of ideas and a bundle of energy. It's, uh, it's, it's really interesting hearing your story, and, and I thank you very much for coming by to tell us about it. It's really a really good story you have. Thanks. It's a pleasure being here. I'm William Shatner, and you're watching Moving America Forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award to Ryan Kelly, the president and CEO of Terrapin Blue of Athens, Georgia, for the outstanding work his company is doing to help move America forward. Ryan, it's a pleasure to give this to you. Congratulations. Thank you, Don. It's an honor being here, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity for recognizing our company and all the dedicated staff and uh, all the folks that we've worked with around the country to make, uh, make a difference, and we look forward to continuing to do that as we move forward. That's it for another edition of Moving America Forward. I'm Bert Tenzer. Join us again as we continue to bring you the entrepreneurs who move America forward. I'm William Shatner, and for all of us at Moving America Forward, thanks for watching.